fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Come on, big fellow! I'll silver! Boy! The Lone Ranger, with Tonto and Dan, the 14-year-old nephew of the masked man, were camped in the evergreen forest of the high border country. Their shelter and that of the horses was made of poles and pine balls. Dan was watching Tonto repair a bridle and talking to the masked man. Golly, I wish I could do more to help. More to help? What do you mean, Dan? Oh, I'm I'm just a hindrance to you and Tano. Why, if it wasn't for me, you could have left this country a long time ago and gone back to Texas. We'll go back to Texas, Dan, when you go with us. We're here until Mr. Martin gets your grandmother's affairs all settled. But I'm no help. Oh, yes, you are. You know this country. You know the Indians around here. You've been a lot of help so far. Oh, hang it all. I feel as if I'm laying down on the job. You what? I, I said I felt I wasn't doing my share. No, that's not what you said. Well, I... I guess I said I was laying down on the job. Yes, that's what you said. Then a hen lays, but you lie down. Oh. Oh! That's right. You lay down a book, a hen lays an egg, but you lie down. Oh, I remember now. There was something about lay and lie in the book Granny used when she taught me reading and writing. Now, your namesake is Daniel Webster. Remember that. You must do credit to the name Daniel. I should have said I was lying down. Just careless, I guess. You were careless? Yes, sir. Dan, don't let carelessness handicap you in life. You see, if you're careless in your speech or your dress, it's a sign that you'd be careless in other things. Remember this. A man is judged by his appearance and his speech. Now, if you're neat and orderly in small things, well, the bigger things will take care of themselves. That was one of the things your father used to tell me. Gosh, I wish I'd known my dad. I wish you had, Dan. He was the finest man that ever lived. I suppose there's no chance for me to be the man he was. You must be as good or better than he was, Dan. You see, he's counting on you. You must learn to ride any horse and to use a gun. If I could only have a gun of my own to carry. No, not yet, Dan. You're not old enough. Besides, a gun in the hands of a careless man. Careless? Oh, I understand. Between now and the time you're old enough to own a gun, we'll work hard so you'll be an expert marksman. When you're ready, I'll see that you have a pistol of your own. One of the best that can be had. Oh, golly, that'll be worth working for. I've studied as much as I could about them. I've seen pictures and handled a few different kinds. What was that? A rifle shot. Ah, uh, you've come from that way. Beyond the woods. Come on, stay behind us, Dan. 
Dan kept close behind the Lone Ranger and Tonto as they broke from the sheltering woods. On the open plain, where the sun reflected from dazzling white snow, they saw an Indian, a Blackfoot who groped blindly. An Indian is snow blind. Tonto, you know what to do. Protect his eyes. Uh, me fix them. Say, this rifle's brand new. Yes, Dan. What kind of a rifle is it? My golly, it looks like one of the new army carbines. I've seen pictures of them. The cavalry uses them. Right. But I can't understand how this Blackfoot got such a gun. Unless... Unless what? Unless from the wagon train, which was raided on the Northwest Trail last week. Several boxes of new carbines intended for the soldiers at the fort were stolen by renegades. Gosh, do you think this Indian was one of them? You understand the Blackfoot language, Dan. Ask the Indian where he got this gun. All right. Wada Dula Mata Gola. Ula Manapana. Sibo Shima. Go Soma Soma. Oh. He says it was given to him by a band of traders who visited his village. They traded guns and firewaters with all the braves of his tribe in exchange for beaver skins. Guns and firewater? That mean plenty trouble. Yes. There's no telling what may happen with that combination. I'll bet those men are the same ones that robbed the wagon train. Ah. They make plenty big profit trading guns for furs. Ask the Indian where they are now, then. Lena Sumata Nula. Ama Ama. Sama Osima. Crow. They packed the carbines and firewater they had left about an hour ago and took the trail for the Crow village. Not bad. Blackfeet and Crow, big enemies. Hola, hola. Oma, Crow. Namorogo. Yes. He says the Blackfeet are angry. They're preparing to make war on the Crows before the traders give them guns. If that happens, a fight may spread through the mountain tribes. Innocent fur trappers may be slaughtered in a general Indian uprising. Oh, golly, what do we do? Both the Blackfeet and the Renegades must be stopped. Huh. Ride to the army post, Dan. Tell the commandant the story and give him this. He knows who I am. Oh, a silver bullet. And what we do? Take the Indian on your saddle, Tonto. We'll go to the Blackfoot village. Uh, uh, you come. Uh, come on. Uh, I'll there. see you later. Get that boy. Get along there. Get him up, scout. He's a silver. Come on, silver. As Dan raced back along the trail toward the army post, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, with the Blackfoot brave in his saddle, rode in the direction of the Indian village. Suddenly they heard gunfire, wild yells, and the ominous sound of throbbing war drums. A moment later, they reached a knob overlooking the Indian camp and reined in their horses before the chilling sight of hundreds of Blackfeet braves, their tempers wetted by the renegade's firewater, wildly stomping to the beat of the war drums while they brandished and fired their new rifles into the air. Then as they saw the masked man and the two Indians, the tall figure of their chief strode forth, and silence cut sharply across the bedlam. Up to us now, Tonto. Uh, Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. That must be the chief coming to meet us. Uh-huh. Oh, Silver, ho, oh, Scout. Oh, 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 oh. What white man who hide fish, what here? When I come Oma, to... Pana, Mala, Mala, Sibo, Ama. Mono Timiniara. The Indian we brought with us seems to be explaining to the chief what happened. Uh. White man bring gray wolf. Son to cripple horse, me, Blackfoot chief. Him say you help. I'm glad my friend and I were able to help, chief. Gray wolf say him blind. Him not see. Your son's blindness will pass. How you know that? The black paste under gray wolf's eyes is white man's medicine. It will help him to see again. White man, medicine plenty powerful. If him speak truth. I speak the truth, crippled horse. What are your people saying? Black feet not believe. White man, magic. I see. I'll make a bargain with you, chief. What mean? Order your braves not to make war on the crows. And I'll give you my word that your son's sight will be restored before sundown. White trader go to give crow many gun. Make plenty powerful to kill Blackfeet. We go kill Crow first. The guns the white traders have given you are stolen. They belong to the soldiers at the fort. Soldier come get guns? Yes. Blackfeet not give them up. Give white trader plenty beaver skin. Not give them up gun. The soldiers will come to capture the men who cheated you. Your furs will be returned. We give back gun by and by when soldier come. Now we ride. Kill plenty crow with them. Wait, Chief, wait. What about your son? Gray Wolf, no longer warrior. Him not see to shoot crow. Him stay with squaw and papoose. And you don't believe that his sight will come back? Uh, me not believe in black medicine. 
White man magic, not make gray wolf see. Come on. Come on, more. Hey. More. Oh. Ah, you look, cripple horse. Yes, hey. chief. What's your answer now? Mora. Mora. Gray wolf say him see. Him not blind. Uh, white friend speak with straight tongue. Cripple horse, do what him say. You want to attack the crows? No. Blackfeet brave stay in village. Give gun back to soldier. Thanks, crippled horse. Come along, Tato. Uh, where we go? To head off the renegades from trading guns to the crows. Uh, get him up, scout. Come on, Silver. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto urged their powerful white stallion in sturdy paint along the snow-crusted mountain trail of the Crow Village, some distance ahead of them, a band of hard-faced men leisurely drove a train of pack mules toward the same destination. In their lead rode a tall man whose cheek was slit by an ugly scar and a half-breed with small beady eyes and guns strapped within quick reach of his hands, indicating a gunman. Ought to be sighting the Redskins' village pretty soon, Breed. Oh, we get there plenty quick now. Can't be too quick to suit me. Yeah. I'm hanging to make another killing. Same kind of killing we made with the Blackfeet, eh, Rude? Yeah. Did you ever <laughs> see such dumb engines? After a couple of snorts of fire water, they were ready to trade us their whole village for them guns. Now sell it for what they gave us. Ain't a beaver skin left in the tribe. Fifteen and twenty pelts for a rifle. Them skins fetch eight dollars a piece at the fort. I tell you, Breed, before we're through, we'll each have a bankroll three times as big as my fist. You ain't figuring to exchange the skins for cash at the fort. Sure, why not? Well, they might ask embarrassing questions as to what we traded for the furs. Well, uh, we don't have to tell them nothing. Them soldiers find out we were the ones who stole their carbines from the wagon train, we won't get a chance to say nothing. They won't find out till we've collected our bounty for the furs and hightailed it out of here. Then they can whistle for us, and the cash, too. Yeah, what if one of them black feet takes into his head to go down to the fort carrying one of them new carbines? He won't. Not until we're in the clear. What do you mean? If I know Blackfeet, they're all working themselves up to attack the crows with them guns. Attack the crows? Suppose they raid the village while we're there trading. Uh, the Blackfeet may be a bit riled from that firewater we gave them breed, but they ain't fools. They know from experience that killing the whites likely as not will mean their whole village will be wiped out. I reckon you're right. The crows are a different matter. The Blackfeet hate them like poison. Who'll care if the Redskins want to kill each other off? Just the same, I still don't hanker to take them beaver pelts to the fort. Well, that's where they pay the big prices, Breed. And the best ain't too good for the pelts we've got packing them mules back there. Yeah, not to mention the skins we'll get from the crows, eh, Rude? Yeah. <laughs> I hear them crows have stored up a mess of fine furs to keep them warm for the winter. They won't have it much longer. After we show them the new army carbines and give them a smell of that fire water, they'll be easy picking. What the... Is it? Came from behind that boulder. See the gun smoke? That's not all I see. There's a masked army standing behind that rock. Yeah, and an engine. This is as far as you go, Rude. I don't savvy this breed. What's your game, mister? You've traded all the stolen guns to the Indians that you're going to. Breed, did you hear? He knows about them carbines. Yeah, they ain't the worst of it, Rude. What do you mean? While you were talking, I got a gander at a white horse behind that rock. Masked man, a white horse, and an engine. Do you know what that adds up to? Stop talking in riddles. The Lone Ranger. The Lone... Yeah, I heard of that, hombre. And maybe you heard he don't take kindly to outlaws. If we don't get him, he'll get us. And with 20 of us packing irons to them, too, I figured the masked man will be on the receiving end. Open fire, boys. Let him have it. Wait a minute. This ain't the way to do it. You got any better ideas? Yeah, tell the boys to fan out and start crawling for that rock. We surround them, too. When we get near enough, we'll rush them. I don't know. He can spot us easy against this snow. Sure, but he can't shoot on four sides at once. And while he's taking a shot at one of us, he'll have to expose himself to three or four of our slugs. Yeah, that's so. I'll send him a little lead to show him what I mean. Get down, you fool. You're right in his gun safe. Oh, wing me. Spread out, boys. Make tracks with that boulder. Surround them so they won't have a chance. Rud me'll cover from this tree. Come on, Rud. Give him some of that lead poisoning you was boasting about. Yeah, I will. As soon as the boys are in position, we'll riddle them from all sides. They haven't a chance to get out of that spot alive. Give it to them. Give it to them. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Behind the now increasingly scant protection of their boulder, which blocked the outlaw's path to the Crow Village, the Lone Ranger and Tonto watched the dark figures of the renegades burrow through the snow and form a circle to surround them. Then at a signal from Rude, the menacing circle of outlaws gradually closed in on the two defenders. Yelps of pain followed the crack of the masked man's and the Indian's guns. But with every moment, their position became more exposed to the fire of the gang. We can't hold out much longer, Tonto. Uh, Once the gang is in position, they'll be able to shoot at us from every side. That's right. If only knew what happened to Dan. Oh, him come and bring plenty soldier, you see. As long as he's all right, I... The gang's getting ready to rush us, Tonto. Uh, maybe we, we ride through him, make getaway. A long chance, but our only one. Ready, Kimosabe? Uh, we ride down together. Yes, Silver. Come, Scout. Here they come. Uh, we ride down. Yes, I... Listen. Uh, soldiers, come now. Look. You're right. And there's Dan riding at the head of them with the captain. The gang's making a run for it, Toto. Uh, Steady, big fella. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. As the troop of cavalry with the captain and Dan in the lead thundered into the clearing, the last of the renegades fled through a mountain crevasse and disappeared from sight, leaving their pack mules heavily laden with guns and beaver furs behind. From across the clearing, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode to meet the troopers. You all right? Yes, Dan. You seem to be giving a good account of yourself. Are we going to chase the renegades, Captain? Well, at the first sign of a trooper, the gang would scatter and lose themselves in the woods. We'd never find them. But you can't let them get away. The captain's right, Dan. The only way to capture the gang is to keep them together. That's right. But how? Their tracks are clearly marked in the snow. Tonto, you and I should have no difficulty trailing them. Ah, uh, snow make trail easy. Oh, sure, that's it. Then we'll know when and where's the time for the cavalry to capture the whole shebang. The crates on these pack mules will give you the evidence you need against the gang, Captain. Ah, them carry guns, fire water, and beaver furs. The guns are army carbines stolen to the gang from your wagon train. You'll find many more waiting for you at the Blackfoot Village. I see. I return the beaver skins to the Blackfeet and receive the carbines. Is that it? That's it. They're expecting you. Good. I'll have my men drive the pack train back to the Blackfoot Village at once. You'll hear from us, Captain. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come. Get that boy. Get that horse. As the heavy-laden, slow-moving pack train was turned about by the soldiers and headed back toward the teepees of the Blackfeet, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan raced along the mountain crevasse which the gang had traveled a short time before. The well-marked trail led them on through the lengthening shadows of the afternoon while they kept constantly alert for the gang. Then suddenly, they saw a faint wisp of smoke curl above a clump of trees not far ahead. Quickly reining in, they concealed their horses in the nearby woods and crept stealthily toward the camp of the outlaws. There they are. Ah, uh, them sit around fire, cook meal. They seem to be quarreling about something. We crawl closer, maybe we hear. Yes, careful of those twigs. Gosh, we can see and hear everything from here. Uh, this plenty good spot. Now let's listen. I tell you, Rude, we couldn't be in worse off if we tried. Yeah, we not only lost all them beaver skins, but the army carbines we stole as well. What do you want me to do, cry for you? Reed and me lost more than any of them. That's right, boys. Well, it was your idea, Rude, turning them pack mules loose. And with everything we owned on them, too. That's right. Lucky for all of you, it was. Those troopers would have caught you red-handed. We didn't have any choice. Couldn't save those beaver skins and own skins, too. Uh, maybe so. All I know is I worked plenty to get them guns and them furs. Now I got nothing to show for it. Me too. Oh, quiet. The mass man's the one to blame. Him and the engine. Uh, we were rolling in clover till that hombre came along. Uh, we've been kind of talking it over, Rude. We think Wait a minute. They... Who appointed you to speak, Daniels? Yeah. When there's any thinking to be done, Rude and me will do it. Daniels is trying to say that a lot of us are figuring to quit the gang, Rude. Bust out our own. Oh, so you want to break up, eh? That's not very smart of you, boys. 
Especially when you've got several beaver pelts coming to you. What do you mean? Yeah. What are you getting at, Rude? You surprise me, boys. I thought you gave me credit for more brains and a figure I'd give up them skins so easy. Hey, you know a way to get them back? Yeah. Not only the beaver, but the guns and the whiskey them pack mules are freighting as well. well. Let's hear it. Lay it on the table. Yeah, All right. Oh, wait. What do you suppose is the first thing them soldiers will do with that pack train? I don't know. Search it, I reckon. Yeah. Then they'll find the army carbines we stole, all them beaver pelts. Right. And if they ain't figured out for themselves what we traded for them pelts, the Lone Ranger will put them wise. He must know we traded guns with the Blackfeet for the furs. Sure. That's the first thing the cavalry will do. Ride to the Blackfeet village to reclaim their guns. Yeah. When they get there and hand back them skins for the carbines, we can kiss the beaver and the guns goodbye. Yeah. I, uh, got a hunch the soldiers won't reach the Indian's village. Won't reach it? What's to stop them? Ambush. I don't savvy, you, Rude. You remember where the trail swings wide toward that rocky patch, about five miles this side of the village? Yeah, yeah, I remember. The patch is shaped like a horseshoe. Fifteen men could hide behind them boulders and pick off a mess of troopers if they rode into that horseshoe. They won't ride into it, though, unless they have a reason. They'll have a reason. What? Buffalo. Buffalo? You must be loco, rude. We ain't seen hide nor hair of a buffalo in the three days we've been in these parts. I know it. That's why I'm figuring on using five of you boys for buffalo. I don't get it. I've got five buffalo skins, head and all, hidden in a cave a couple of miles from here. Yeah? Now, if you boys was to hunt yourselves in your saddles and drape them skins over you and your horses, those troopers wouldn't know the difference till it was full of lead. Hey, that sounds pretty slick. You figure the fake buffalo will bait the troopers into the horseshoe? Why, sure. Once they're in, we'll riddle them from every side. And what if the cavalry don't bite at the bait? They'll bite. They'll fall all over themselves to get buffalo meat for their table. Sounds good enough for me. Sure. Yeah. Once we take care of them soldiers, we'll make tracks with them pack mules again. Yeah, we can take them on to the crows like we started out to do before we met up with that lone ranger. That's a ticket, Reed. Then when we take all the beaver skins the crows have stored up, we'll mosey along to the fort and sell a lot of them for plenty of cash. The fort? Ain't that risky after ambushing the troopers? Nobody except those that are caught will know about the ambush until after we've cleared these parts. And those that are caught won't talk. Creeping stealthily through the woods to the brush concealment where they had hitched their horses, the lone ranger, Tonto and Dan, quickly discussed what they had heard. Then Tonto and the boy listened to the masked man's plan. This time we must make sure the gang doesn't escape. Uh. They won't get away. We'll surprise them and surround them before they'll know what's happening. The cavalry must be warned of the ambush. Well, I can ride to the captain. Good. You'll know what to do. We can go back to gang's camp? Yes, Kimosabe. You see, we've got to stay close on their trail when they go to the cave for those buffalo skins. <coughs> I'll see you later. Adios, Dan. Get up. Get along there, boy. Come on, Tato. We have work to do. A short time later, the masked man and his Indian friend watched Rude leave with the bulk of the gang to take up their stations at the ambuscade. Meanwhile, four outlaws led by Breed went to a nearby cave where Rude had cached his buffalo skins, unaware that they were followed by the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Concealed by brushwood outside, the latter watched while three of the outlaws rode from the cave, themselves and their horses grotesquely masqueraded as buffalo. Then the masked man and the Indian went quietly inside. Put up your hands. Masked. You not make move. The engine. We'll take those buffalo skins. So that's your game, huh? Well, try and... You not pull guns. No. No. You give up buffalo skin plenty fast. Working swiftly, the Lone Ranger and Tonto gagged and bound the two outlaws. Then they draped the heavy buffalo skins over themselves and their horses and rode after the others, uninvited guests to Rude's gruesome masquerade. Sometime later, hunched in their saddles and concealed by the huge buffalo skins, the masked man and the Indian worked their way to the mouth of the rocky horseshoe where Rude had planned his ambush. Through tiny slit holes they had made in their robes, they could see Rude staring intently at the trail, waiting for the cavalry to be baited into his trap. Inside the rocky enclosure, they knew Breed, together with the two other outlaws, was cloaked like themselves in the skin of a buffalo. Then suddenly the Lone Ranger and Tonto heard the signal they had been waiting for, the clear notes of a bugle. The 
hoses are riding to the attack tunnel. Ah, uh, empty count lost by surprise. Rude and his gang will be caught in their own trap. Ah. Uh. We've been tricked. How'd them soldiers know we were here? Riddle them, boys. Drill them down. There's too many of them. Drill them, boys. Get them. So you speed. They're cutting us off. The mouth of the patch is still open. Come on, let's ride. I'm with you. Hightail it, horse. There's two of the boys at the entrance still hiding under the buffalo robes. I wonder why they... Look, they're throwing off their robes. The Lone Ranger. And the agent. I want you, Rude. No, let me out of here. He got you, Breed. Stay away from me, Red Skinner. I'll shoot. Lord, let's go. You. No. Take this one, too. Oh. Uh, I've had enough. Out of my way, Redskin. You're staying here, Rude. Not if I can... You ask for it. Oh, my hand. You won't use that gun again. Are you meant to surrender? No. Tell them. Uh, throw down your guns, boys. They've got us surrounded. Oh, oh, oh. oh there, steady. Steady, boy. You're coming with me, Rude. You too, Breed. Headquarters will want to question you two about those carbines you stole. <laughs> That's plenty good pipe, Kim Wasabi. You all right? Yes. Yes, Tonto. Hey, have you seen Dan? Ah, uh, him there with the rest of the soldiers. Oh, steady, Silver. He's a big fella. <laughs> right out and pick him up, Tonto. We've got all the evidence we need, mass man. Good. We were glad to be of service. Ready, Tonto? Uh -huh. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, 